Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic is principles of exodontia from oral surgery. So now what exactly is exodontia? So exodontia it is defined as the painless removal of the whole tooth or root with minimal trauma to the investing tissue so that the wound it heals uneventfully and no post-operative prosthetic problem is created. And this definition is given by Joffrey. Now it says that it should be the painless removal. So exodontia is nothing but your tooth extraction. So this tooth extraction it should be a painless procedure and you're removing the whole tooth or the root and it should be such that it is causing minimal trauma to the investing tissue. Now your tooth it is encircled by various tissues that is your periodontium then your bony socket your alveolar bone. So when you're doing the extraction so it should be such that it is causing minimal trauma to the investing tissue and if there is minimal trauma so in that case the wound it will heal uneventfully so it should be such that the wound it is healing without any problems and there are no pro post operative prosthetic problems which is created when you do the tooth extraction what are the principles of exodontia so principles of exodontia there are two types so the basic principles and the mechanical principles so the basic principles are so the first one is access and visual field so in this there should be good access and clear visual field when you're removing the tooth so it says that now when you're removing the tooth so your field like the tooth whichever the tooth is so it should be clearly viewed so this is the first principle then the next one is use of control force so when you're removing the tooth so you have to see that now these are the two instruments that you basically use for the tooth extraction these are your forceps and over here this is the elevator now basically why are elevators used so elevators they are used for the widening of your bony socket so that your tooth it gets loosened up and then you insert your forceps and then you remove your tooth with the help of this forceps so in this you have to see that whenever you're removing the tooth so the forces they should be under control so that you're not like causing any damage to the investing tissue as we have seen in the definition so in this this is the next principle that you need to use control forces then the next is the unimpended path of removal now whenever there is any resistance to the removal so in that what you need to do is you need to do the sectioning of the tooth now unimpended is there are no obstruction when you're removing the tooth so when are the obstruction that you'll see so it can be in the case of impacted tooth so in that what we do is we section the tooth and then we remove it properly so this is like considered so this point like the obstructions they're considered in the case of impacted or malposed or when the tooth it is deeply carious tooth so in that case you have to see that you are doing the tooth sectioning and then only you're removing the tooth so that you're not causing any problem like further complications in the tooth extraction and the next basic principle is the expansion of the bony socket now this is very important principle that first like you take your time to expand the bony socket rather than like extracting the tooth at first go because now if you don't expand the bony socket so there are chances your tooth it will get fracture now when you do the tooth extraction so you have to see that the beaks of the forceps they should be on the root portion so that your tooth it is not getting fractured if you hold your forceps on the crown and when you remove your tooth now your tooth it is very tightly packed with the bony socket now over here if you consider this is as your root portion and over here this is your crown portion so your crown portion is visibly like it is very visibly seen and over here this is tightly compacted or tightly packed so if you don't insert your beak of the forceps till here so there are chances that your tooth it will get fractured so in that you have to see that you first expand the bony socket with the help of this elevator so over here now you can see this is the expansion of the bony socket and then you insert your forceps easily over here till the root portion and then you remove your tooth in the buccal and the lingual movement so this is the basic principles of exodontia now what are the mechanical principles of exodontia so in this once the adaptation and securing the grip of the instrument over the tooth is done so after that the force is to be applied it should be in a predetermined direction and which depends on this mechanical principle that are your lever principle wedge principle or it can be a wheel and axial principle so these three are the very main like mechanical principles of exodontia that you have to follow like whenever you're doing the tooth extraction starting with the first one that is the liver principle now in this liver principle it has three basic components that is your fulcrum effort and load over here this is your fulcrum this is your effort arm and this is your load arm so these are the three basic components of your liver principle now in this 
your fulcrum it is positioned between the load and the effort arm and when you're doing this principle that is your lever principle so now you need to gain that mechanical advantage so how you're gaining that mechanical advantage it is by now in this your effort arm it should be longer than the load arm now why because you apply the forces on this effort arm and you gain the advantage over this load arm now we are going to see how the application of this lever principle is done in the case of forceps now this is your forceps application so in this now the forceps it has this handles hinges and beak now over here the hinge portion is acting as your fulcrum that is the portion which is between the effort and the load arm now over here the handle it acts as your effort arm so effort arm now we have seen they are longer than the beak arm that is your load arm so over here now you have to see that now when you are doing the tooth extraction so obviously now you hold your forceps at the handle portion so you apply the forces on the handle so over here now we have seen that you are applying the forces on the effort and you are gaining the advantage on the load arm so over here now this is how it looks so you are applying the forces from the effort arm that is your handle of the forces and then you gain the advantage over this beaks that is your beak arm that is your load arm through which you do the tooth extraction so this is the lever principle in the case of forceps now how is the application in the case of elevator so in this the handles of the elevator it represents the effort and the working end which engages the tooth which represents the load now over here this is your elevator so the elevator now you apply the forces so the effort arm is at this working end of your elevator and then your load arm is over the tooth which is to be extracted so this is how you gain the access or the advantage in the case of elevator for this lever principle now the next is the wedge principle so what is wedge so wedge it consists of two movable inclined planes with a base on one end and a blade on the other end so this is how exactly a wedge looks so now over here this is also a wedge so this wedge they are having this inclined planes and over here this is the base and now how you gain the advantage is in wedge principle now for example this is the wood and we want to separate or we want to break the wood into two parts so what you do is you insert this wedge and then you apply the forces with the help of this hammer and then you hit the base of the wedge so over here now you can see as you're hitting the base of the wedge so this wedge it helps in the separation of this wood into two parts now you can see that now this wedge principle it overcomes a large resistance at right angle to the applied force now over here you can see so these are the forces which are applied in the vertical direction and the separation it is done in the horizontal direction so the separation or the advantage it is gained in the right angles so over here so the effort it is applied to the base of the plane and the resistance it has its effect on the plant side so when you are applying the forces or the like uh, efforts on the base of the plane you are gaining that advantage or the resistance at the slant side of your wedges now how is the application of this wedge principle in the case of tooth extraction so the application in forceps is so the tip of forceps it is inserted in between the mucoperiosteum and the surface of the tooth so you insert your forceps that is your beak of the forceps between the mucoperiosteum and the surface of the tooth so when the beaks they are inserted further now we have like i have already said that we need to insert our beak till the root portion so as you are inserting the beak further so the mucoperiosteum it gets displaced and because of that the bony socket it is getting expanded and this results in the slow separation of the periodontal ligament from the bone which helps in the expansion of the bony socket and with the help of that you remove your tooth easily so that now your tooth so that your bony socket it is now expanded so it becomes very easy to remove the tooth with the forceps so this is how the application is done in the case of wedge principle for the forceps now how it is for the elevator so while you are luxating a tooth from its socket a straight elevator it is applied between the tooth and the bone to separate the attachment of the pdl from the bone so this wedge principle is basically you are inserting your forceps or elevator between the mucoperiosteum and the surface of the tooth and then you are gaining that advantage now over here you can see so this is your elevator and over here when you are applying the forces so you apply your forces at the handles so now you can see when you are applying the forces so because of that there is expansion of the bony socket and then 
your tooth it will get extracted over here when you are applying these forces so this is how your tooth extraction is done in the case of the wedge principle next one is the wheel and the axle principle so this wheel and axle principle it is a modified form of the lever principle so in this the effort it is applied to the circumference of the wheel which turns the axle so as to raise the weight now if for example in the case of car so you are moving your steering wheel so because of that the axle of your car it also moves and hence your car it is moving so in this also so this is basically when you are moving your instrument in the case of tooth extraction in a circular or when you are rotating your instrument so because of that rotation now you are like applying the forces around the circumference of your instrument so because of that you apply that forces and it helps in the extraction of your tooth now this wheel and axle principle it is basically and commonly used in the cases of crossbar elevator so this is basically how your crossbar elevator is it looks so this crossbar elevator it is used in the extraction of the mandibular roots so when you apply the effort in the circumference of your crossbar elevators and because of that your tooth it is getting extracted so now in this greater the diameter of the wheel more is the mechanical advantage now how is the application of this wheel and axle principle in the case of elevator so in this the crossbar elevators they are used for removing the mandibular roots and this is like the most commonly like elevators which are based on this principle so the working point of this elevator it is engaged deep into the space between the tooth root and the bone and then the handle it is rotated and in this the root it is removed by moving out into a circumference now over here this is how exactly your crossbar elevator it looks so in this now you are inserting your crossbar elevator deep into the bony socket and then what you do is you move or you rotate your crossbar elevator in the circumferential motion so you rotate it in the circular motion and because of that so when you are like applying the forces around the circumference and because of that now your tooth it will get extracted so this is exactly how it looks so you are like engaging your crossbar elevator that is your blade of your crossbar elevator into the percussion area and because of that now when you apply that circular forces so because of that your tooth it will pop out of that socket so this is the application in the case of elevator for this wheel and axle principle now how is the application in the case of forceps so the beak of forceps they are applied firmly on the either side of the tooth and the force it is applied in the form of an arc so this is basically you are holding the tooth like you are holding the tooth with the beaks of the forceps and then you are applying the force in the form of an arc now according to this principle when the forces it is applied on the handle of the forceps so it results in the bodily rotation of the tooth in the socket so now when you are applying the forces in the circular motion so basically your tooth it will also move in the rotational motion in the socket and so the tooth it will get extracted by this so this principle it can be used separately or it can be used in the combination with the wedge or the lever principle so this is the third principle of your exodontia that is the wheel and the axial principle that is like you are applying the forces in the circular motion and because of that you gain that mechanical advantage that is the extraction of your tooth so this was all about the mechanical and the basic principles of exodontia i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much